All right. Now for the Juniper, what is this one? Uh, EX4550, 10 gig switch. Wow. Again, this came from Austin Ayers. Thanks, bud. Now, something which I noticed right off the hop. Remember I was showing you guys my Sun Microsystems uh, power supplies here? Made by Delta Energy Systems. Check this out. Does that look similar to you? Actually, they're completely identical except for the fans. The um, AC Bell here, which has more Chinese writing on it than my Delta here. Um, oh, yeah, there, there's something funny for you guys. Actually, is that Chinese or Japanese? I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, all you guys crapping on Huawei. Uh, well, <laughs> look at this. Oh, I'm afraid of things that come from Asia. Yeah, you know what? Get over it. You're being brainwashed. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, of course, some of you out there would be like, well, no, there's spy software in it. Yeah, whatever. You don't know how power supplies work then. So anyway, my rant over. Here's the Sun Microsystems one. Let me plug this guy in. And if you look here, you can see right there. Watch. Oh, can you see it? Hold on. There you go. Boop. Plugs in perfectly. So these are essentially identical power supplies, uh, except from different companies. Let's see here. Oh, sorry. Let me not see identical. Hold on. All right, so it's the form factor that's the same. Yeah, that still goes back to my point on my DC video anyway, about uh, how easy it is to get these guys for DC. So a switch like this, you can definitely get a 48-volt power supply for, but let's take something else. Let's uh, plug it in and hook up the multimeter and see what happens. I'll bet you it's 12 volts. Uh, where did I put my multimeter now? Oh, my nose is so stuffed. I'm in misery right now. Here we go. It fires up like server. 12 volts on the nose. Look at that. Now, something else which I should point out. Uh, let me see if I, I can get this to focus. Read that. AC input, 100 to 240. DC input, negative 48 volts to negative 60 volts, 7 amps. That's because this piece of tech here is designed to be out in the field. It's designed to be in a cabinet if you want. You can use this thing for telecommunications, okay? Um, so in here, I could take off the heat sinks, but they are really on there, so screw that. But clearly, clearly this is where our brain is, or right here. Um, here's our hard drive. It looks like it is probably a 128 um, gigabyte, maybe a 2 gigabyte. Hard to say. Um, these are all of your switch fabric here for your ports, your SFP Plus ports for the, uh, would you call that a South Bridge? Yeah, well, anyway, here's where your network interfaces are, right? Coming back down to here. Now, all the networking stuff is actually happening on the internal layers of this board. There's really nothing surface level. Everything on here is ground plane. You can't see traces. All the traces are in the board, um, which would, one, make it a real bitch to work on if you're trying to repair something like this. But uh, that's something which my business partner Thomas does. Um, in fact, that's why I don't touch a lot of the stuff that, uh, <laughs> that uh, he works on because he's the one who knows how to go through all of the uh, internals on this stuff. So yeah, we've got our RAM here. We've got our CPU. Uh, I really want to see what's underneath of this. It's so tempting to pull it off, but uh, I can already feel it's not coming off easily. So again, I need this because I'm learning on it. So there's going to be no destructive teardown of this, but uh, wow. There you go. That's the inside of this gen oh, Juniper. Look at that. I just noticed something here. There is a skid mark there. A couple of capacitors are toast. Huh. I am going to have to send this upstairs to Thomas and get him to look at that for me. So, let's see here. I'll send that up to him so that he can see it and get him to fix it rather than me. So we've got two damaged capacitors there. They look like they go to...
Let's see here. They look like filter caps. Fortunately, there's identical ones here. This is a parallel circuit, as you can see. We've got parallel inductors here, parallel VRs, parallel diodes. Um, that's either for redundancy or increased current. But, uh, yeah, you can definitely see that those guys are actually shorted together. So, you know what I'm going to do? Let me, uh, I think I can get this off just so that they're not shorted out anymore because I don't want to fry the switch. Uh, where is my nozzle? Do I have a schnozzle? I might might not have a schnozzle, but uh, let's see here. This is what I want. This might be a bitch to heat up. There we go. Let's see if I can't uh, get that flux to flow or that solder to flow. Pull these guys off. There's a lot of plane here. I might have to preheat this and then pop it off with the soldering iron. Yeah, we're gonna just do this. I'm gonna use a Oops. Let's use my solder, sol, soldering iron. Oh, it sucks having a stuffy nose. Bloody hell. Stupid bad weather. Let's see if I can get it off with this. I'll do the blob method. Which is where you just blob solder onto it to use it as a uh, thermal fluid basically thermal conduction fluid all right i got the one cap off so now i can go to the next one oof this is no bueno oh, it's a good thing that there's two sets of them oh and thankfully the pads haven't lifted or anything See, I almost got the second one off. All right, there we go. Let's get it off the pad. It's not a big deal as long as it's not welded on. Wow, that capacitor was toasty. Yeah, it looks like we might have a little bit of damage here. It's uh, she took a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of damage. Let me just get some isopropyl on here. And get a brush. Uh, where's my brush sets? Let's see here. How bad is it? Eh, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Let me get these little pieces off of here. All right, there we go. Yeah, there's some board damage there. Oof. She took a brutal hit. Okay. Got some, I'm going to put some more flux on here now. I'm just going to clean up these pads and get them ready for Thomas to work on. There we go. I love solder wick. It's such a great invention. Look at that. The, yeah, there's some major damage there. And that is not for me to fix because Thomas is the expert on this sort of stuff. So I'll get this prepped up for him. And I guess I'll leave it in pieces and get him to repair it for me. And then I will put it in my rack. And uh, I can start playing with it and training on it. And as I've mentioned a thousand times in the past, but nobody has taken me up on it yet. If any of you guys want access to any of the equipment that I have here, you can just let me know and I can let you guys train on it. If you've got a CCNA lab or if you've got uh, 
you need to uh, learn a router OS or whatever, I'm pretty well equipped for uh, anybody who needs access to equipment. There we go. There we go. So that's a little bit better. Yeah, you can still see that it is... Uh, let me see if I can zoom. Hold on. I don't think I've ever zoomed in a video before like this. All right. Uh, yeah, you can see the nuked pad now. I really should have a my microscope. You know what? I'm, I've got the Sony working good for top down now. I've got the microphone figured out now. I'm just finalizing my microphone settings. I've got everything sorted out now for my top down section of my videos. I just need to figure out my microscope camera and whatnot. That's all. So, fortunately, it looks like the caps run in parallel to each other here. So it's just one side, the other side, and the two caps go uh, right side by side. Yeah, or let me say it the way that uh, Canadians usually say things like that. Oh yeah, it's it, you can see right here that they're side by each. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So now this thing's all prepped up, and I can uh, send it upstairs to get repaired. Uh, that's one of the perks of your business partner being a uh, a genius lab rat. Like, hey, buddy, I got something broken. Could you please fix it for me, please? And, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Ah, I fucked up. Yeah. Here we go. Repair. P, not R. All right, so there we go. That is inside of this Juniper switch, which is sexy as hell. And actually, that kind of worried me. I powered this thing up with that kind of damage there. But uh, now that I can actually see the way that um, the circuit operates, they are literally parallel capacitors. So the fact that they were shorted between each other is not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. So, yeah, they were just screwed. But the bigger question is, is why? Why were they toast? What happened? Because that means that something else is broken around here. And if we follow the chain here, power comes in here. There's our parallel buses. Uh, this looks like the primary here, and this is a secondary. And then they come out over here, and as you can see, we've got our isolation diodes here on this circuit, and then they go... I'm assuming they're going to go through here, or they're going to branch out to here and here. So, yeah, so something's toast, for sure. Maybe this VR point pop. Either way, I'll get him to take a look at it, and we're going to get it back up and running, because that's what he does. So, anyway, I hope that that video was entertaining for you guys. I just figured they're here, they showed up, and, uh, yeah. Rather than just toss them into the rack and start uh, using them, it's probably a better idea that I did a little teardown video for you guys because I know that a few of you guys are always requesting teardowns. You're always requesting teardowns. And I know I have fun doing teardowns anyway because I do like inspecting equipment too. So there we go. That's all she wrote. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. And if you guys have any... Uh, content that you want to see leave it in the comments below below whatever and um yeah have a great day everybody